Okay. Um, we received another uh, chat question from Thomas. Can the DuraFet be used on limestone slurry or gypsum slurry? I, I have used, uh, or I haven't used, I've suggested DuraFets for limestone slurry applications in uh, central Ohio, almost over near West Virginia, and the, it did not function as well as we wanted it to. Uh, Honeywell also has an HB probe, um, which is a um, little heavier duty probe than the DuraFet or the standard combination glass. Uh, we were getting about five and a half months in a limestone slurry application using DuraFet. Uh, we went to the HB probe and it was lasting about two and a half years. So for those applications, we didn't touch on that, uh, but uh, for those applications, I would use the HB probe. Okay. And we received um, another question from John. Can you change the constant on a high purity conductivity cell for a higher range and obtain stability in the reading? Um, let me answer that the way I think I heard it. You, you, you match your cell constant for the application. A, a 0.01 is generally used in the 0 to 2 microsiemen range, a 0.1 for 0 to 20 a 1.0 for 0 to 200, and a 10 for 0 to 2,000. So it's, it's tough to use a 0.01 if you're measuring 0 to 10. It will it'll flash on you because it's only, good, only made for measuring 0 to 2, <coughs> excuse me, 0 to 2 microsiemens. However, the conductivity probes have gotten so well made these days, and the analyzers with the microprocessors are so well that I have seen people use a, say, a 0.1, which is generally good for 0 to 20, down in the range of 1 and 2 microsiemens. Um, most power plant people would not use it for their 0.7 or 0.07 conductivity. They'd probably use a 0.01 cell constant. But if it's an industrial application, uh, you can you can use the higher cells in lower ranges, but I would not use a lower range in the higher measurements. Matter of fact, you can't. Okay. I think we're going to take one more question here because we are um, running a little short on time. Uh, we received a question from Ariel. Do we need conductivity for treating bacteria in reverse osmosis, thus for black and gray water treatment? I think it would be a good idea to take that, find out her email. Uh, and I'll send that to somebody else. I, get, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. So, um, Ariel, if you would just um, type in your, your email address, and I will go ahead and uh, get that over to Tony so he can uh, get your answer, get your uh, question answered. Okay. Um, so, we do have actually a lot of questions coming through, and I don't believe we will be able to get to all of them today um, because we're running out of time. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that we are um, available to answer your questions offline if we didn't get to them. Um, Joe will be happy to answer any questions you may have, and Industrial Controls has a full staff that um, can answer your questions one-on-one, -on -one, so feel free to contact us um, to take the discussion further, and um, the contact information is up on the screen. Um, if you missed any part of today's presentation, we will uh, post a recorded version on our website, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, within the next couple of days, uh, we will email a link to the video and our contact information if you have any further questions or feedback for future webinars. Um, I also do want to mention we, we have a few more webinars coming up in April. On April 21st, we will be presenting part two of pneumatic control systems. And we will be running another one on how to design an industrial gas detection system for toxic and flammable gases on April 22nd. Uh, we will be sending out email invita invitations soon, and um, both will be up on our, on our website under the online training section. That's industrialcontrolsonline.com. Um, so I just wanted to thank everyone for attending today, and uh, we look forward to having you back soon. All right, thanks, guys.